hundreds of hours on this plan, looking at, reading it, uh, f figuring out whether these were ideas that I thought would be great for Wisconsin, and they are ones. I stand behind those ideas. A conversation with Democratic candidate for governor Mary Burke this morning on For the Record. Good morning, I'm Neil Heinen. We begin our For the Record countdown to the November 4th election this morning. We will feature a variety of candidates, analysts, and perspectives over the next five weeks, including the head of the National League of Women Voters next week, and a special one-hour debate between the candidates for Wisconsin Attorney General on Sunday, November 2nd. This morning, our guest is the Democratic candidate for governor, Madison School Board member, former Wisconsin Commerce Secretary and Trek Bike Executive Mary Burke. A note before we begin, Governor Walker's campaign has acknowledged our invitation to appear on For the Record, but have not yet accepted our offer. If they do, we'll spend a half hour with the governor. But this morning, WISC senior political reporter Jessica Arp and I welcome to For the Record Mary Burke. <laughs> Mary, nice to see you again. Thank you. Well, great to be here, Neil and Jessica. It's my pleasure. Um, obviously, we both have a lot of questions about <laughs> issues, um, about your plan and sure. the author of the plan. Um, but I also want to acknowledge there are a lot of people who have not met you yet, haven't heard you speak. Sure. Um, and, you know, I don't want them to leave this morning saying, well, that was interesting, but I really didn't get to know her or sure. get to know who she is. So maybe if you could just take a few minutes describing your relevant life and work yeah. experiences and the motivations for why you want to be governor. Sure. I, Neil, I'm a fourth generation Wisconsinite, and my great grandparents were, were farmers. Uh, my grandpa George was, was a mailman, and in fact, 50 years ago, he delivered delivered the mail to the house that I live in today. So every day I am reminded of the deep Wisconsin roots that I have and the values that I was brought up on. Uh, my mom was the first in her family to, to graduate from college and my dad started this business in a barn in Waterloo, Wisconsin, Trek Bicycle. So I'm very proud of the role that I have played in growing Trek to nearly a thousand employees right here in Wisconsin. But uh, before joining Trek, I was an entrepreneur who started my own business. I know the challenges that entrepreneurs face. I also know the opportunities and that has to be one of the drivers of Wisconsin's economy. So as with Trek, the division I ran, I increased sales from $3 million to over $50 million in a few short years, which was selling great Wisconsin products all over the world. So I have real experience in knowing how to create jobs, how to grow Wisconsin's economy based on that experience. Uh, I then led the Wisconsin Department of Commerce and we did everything from reopening the paper mill in Park Falls, saving 300 jobs there, uh, to, to expanding and starting a new uh, tax credit program program that attracted more capital to early stage companies that has been so successful that it has been expanded numerous times um, since that time or attracting new businesses to the state. Uh, the unemployment rate at that point was 4.8 percent. We had 50,000 more business or more jobs than we have currently. And then in the last uh, six years, since seven years since I left Commerce, I've been working on education. I saw that we weren't succeeding, that there weren't enough kids graduating from high school and being prepared for jobs or careers. So I established a partnership between the Boys and Girls Club and the public schools uh, to make sure that more students had that opportunity. Opportunity, that, that college wasn't determined by your family's paycheck, but by your dreams and your hard work. Yeah. And so now we have nearly 750 students in this program in high school and over 200 that are enrolled in college. Most that'll be the first in their families to go. This is the Evitops program the for Avitops people who are familiar with that. Right. Exactly. So, uh, so that's the type of background I bring to, to being governor. And I think it's perfect. It's, it's business. It's government leadership, it is education and nonprofit, and my approach to things is, is not very political. To me, it's about being realistic about where we are right now, setting priorities, establishing a vision for where we want to get to in Wisconsin, getting all the ideas on the table, um, and selecting the best ones. I don't care where they come from. I don't care whether they're Democratic or Republican ideas. What I care about, are they going to work? Are we going to get results? And then bring people together. This divisive atmosphere that we have seen over the last three years, it's not who we are in Wisconsin and it's not what gets results. Right. So as governor, I want to bring people together. That's what I've done throughout my career, 
and that's how we're going to move Wisconsin forward. Now, all of this is contained in your, in your plan, which um, um, you rolled out a, a month or so ago. Uh, it's a comprehensive document, but the news of the week, Mary, as you know, has been uh, the discovery that parts of the plan are identical to parts of plans that I think three other governors had in there. And, you know, I, I just, I think the, the first question that comes to mind is obviously, is this your plan? Can, can the voters trust that this document is Mary Burke's blueprint for the state of Wisconsin? Absolutely. I have put in hundreds of hours on this. Every single idea in there is an idea that I believe will drive Wisconsin's economy forward. That is good for, for this state. And I did take ideas from other places, uh, from uh, people who I sat down with. Michael Porter, he is known throughout the world for his work around industry clusters and how you use that to drive economic development. I sat down with Michael Porter. His work is included in here. And so what we need to do is we need to, we we need to go after the good ideas that are going to make sure that Wisconsin jobs are growing, that our economy is growing, because right now we're dead last in the Midwest in terms of job growth under Governor Walker. So you take 10 Midwestern states, we're at the bottom. Now I know we're better than that, and I know the people of Wisconsin know that we're better than that, but we need to be able to bring in good ideas and we need leadership that is going to bring people together to work on those. And so that's what my plan is. It is, uh, it's a thorough plan, it has been very well received. It was actually introduced in March. Uh, these recent attacks by Governor Walker sort of coincide with the bad job numbers, unfortunately, that have come out about how our economy is doing. We continue to lag, and in August, the news is that we lost 4,300 jobs. Um, so I think this is somewhat based on uh, trying to distract from the poor jobs news that we have heard recently. But no, I stand by this plan. It's a great plan. It's not only what I'm running on, it's what I'm going to start implementing day one as governor. If you spent hundreds of hours on this plan, how did you not know that this consultant had used his ideas in multiple places? And included in your plan, there are word for word copies of four other governor's plans? Well, I, I read through every single one of these ideas, but I didn't necessarily read through all the plans of other governors. And so uh, Mr. Schnur was one of the people that uh, we utilized to put together this plan. And he, uh, these are some ideas and best practices that he saw going on around the, the rest of the country and uh, that he had brought to here, to, to us. But I wouldn't have included them if I didn't think that they were good for Wisconsin. And, and any ones uh, that are not his language and what he used in other plans are cited um, from other sources. We have something like 83 footnotes in this plan. So there is a lot of sourcing of where this information came from. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk more about the plan. We're going to talk about jobs and education right after this. Jessica Arp, WISC's senior political correspondent, and I are talking with Mary Burke this morning, the candidate, Democratic candidate for governor. Did you want to follow up? I, I... Yeah, yeah. Well, wanted to ask you, I mean, a little bit more about this, this jobs issue. There's been uh, some questioning because of this uh, issue with the consultant and whatnot that this can somehow undermine your authenticity or your credibility in your campaign and even connections made to the fact that you are on the Madison School Board and students wouldn't necessarily be able to do what was done in this plan. Do you believe this undermines your credibility as a candidate? Absolutely not. As I, as I said, every single passage, and I'll tell you, it's a very small part of the 44 pages and ideas that, that are in here that are being cited, but every single one of those, if it's not Mr. Schnur's own uh, language that he, he has used, it is cited and it's footnoted. Um, and so that's, uh, that's the standard uh, that we do hold people to. And I'm very proud of the plan. And as I, I have been very clear from the start of this is that these really are best practices and good ideas that I think will work in Wisconsin and that I have taken from other places. As an executive with Truck Bicycle, we always looked at how we could improve the company by looking around us, not only in our own industry, but in other industries to say, 
hey, what are successful companies doing? What are their best practices? How do they, you know, what do they use in terms of organizing their company around product design? Um, these are, that's how organ good organizations move forward. They, not every idea has to be an original idea. It has to be ideas that are going to, that are going to work, that are based on best practices. That's what really good public policy is about. And so I'm, I definitely stand by my hand, plan. I'm very proud of these ideas and uh, of the ones that are going to make sure that we are growing because we need new ideas if we're going to have a thriving economy here in Wisconsin. And I'm concerned because I haven't seen those types of ideas under, uh, under Governor Walker that are going to drive Wisconsin forward. So what in this plan is a unique Mary Burke idea? Or is this plan primarily an aggregation of all these other ideas from other places that you think are good? Well, I would say a lot of these plans, I don't, I'm trying to think, Jessica, whether, okay, was I the first person who ever thought of this idea? Well, you know, I don't know about that, but I can tell you uh, one thing that's in this plan that I said, I, you know, I want to make sure that we have in this plan is the, is the possible use and growth of um, anaerobic digesters. You know, I think that it has possibilities because it, it addresses an environmental problem or helps to address an environmental problem. It can make our, our farms more competitive. Um, it also actually takes advantage of the strong research and manufacturing capabilities that we have here in Wisconsin. And if we were a leader in this area, I think we could benefit in three or four different areas because of that. So I, I'm not saying I was the first one to ever think of uh, uh, digesters, but it's in this plan because I thought that it would be a great idea for Wisconsin. Certainly my work on the school board that I have seen in terms of uh, the importance of starting on career paths in high school is another one. You know, that's something that uh, uh, some other states are, are using and leading in terms of um, looking at high school in that regard because our economy has changed, but in some ways our education system has not changed as quickly to make sure that young people are prepared when they're coming out of high school. And so that is included in here. I cite studies from the Lumina Foundation that show that we need to create 670,000 more degree holders to be able to compete for the jobs of, tw of tomorrow, by 2025. That's a huge number of increases, whether it's a certificate or a two-year degree. So there is a lot of different ideas in here, um, and they are ones that I believe in. Um, Mary, I want to ask you a question about jobs. Um, there's a lot about jobs in there, and I'm, we're going to set aside the numbers, 250,000 and, and uh, for the time being, and go to the, to, to the uh, much-asked question of the role that a gover governor sure. plays in yeah. creating jobs. And there has been a lot, I, I'd say the vast majority of people would say that the governor does not play a big role in creating yeah. jobs. And in fact, this past week, Paul Phelan in the Capital Times said, sure. you know, all the experts he talks to says that the governor can't play a really a, a, a major role in creating jobs. But I just got back from uh, from Alabama and okay. a conference down there, and the former head of the Alabama Development Office answered a question, actually from David Haynes from the Journal Sentinel, who was yeah. talking about Governor Walker's claim, and he was he got really serious and he said. You know, I can't talk for anybody else, but I firmly believe that a governor can play a huge role yeah. in creating jobs. Do you believe that? Because if you do, you'll be held to that standard too. I, absol I absolutely believe that. And it's why I'm so excited to be running for governor. It's, so, it's why I'm so excited to be governor because I want to lead this state forward. I want to have a strong top 10 thriving economy and I know that we can do it here in Wisconsin. And so I I certainly believe that and I've outlined uh, how we can start on that road. But there's short term things, Neil, and there's long term things. Some of the short term things that I would point to is certainly I would have um, accepted the federal Medicaid expansion. That is $200 million in this budget alone. Now that's money that comes from outside of the state and comes back in our, our state. It creates jobs. It also reduces the cost of health care overall, which makes it easier for businesses uh, to be able to add people. Because when businesses face high health care costs, they think twice about adding people. So as governor, I want to bring down health care costs. I want to work hard to do that. We have to make smart decisions, like accepting this Medicaid expansion, because it would bring more money into the state that has a multiplier effect. I would certainly have supported the $800 million to upgrade and modernize uh, rail here in Wisconsin. That was immediately thousands of construction jobs, 
hundreds of manufacturing jobs, and each one of those jobs, when people spend that money in their local communities, it has that multiplier effect again. So these are, these are clear examples that would immediately create jobs and bring money into our economy that has a multiplier effect. And then when you go longer term, quality of our education, whether we're turning out innovative, intelligent, trained, well-trained people to be able to not only fill jobs where there's retirements, but companies more and more look to expand where there is the qualified workforce that they can be able to depend on. Because I know from my work at Trek, an organization is only as strong as its people. And so the number one concern of employers and the success of businesses is drived by, driven by the people that they are able to hire. And it's not only those who work within companies, but it's the people who, who may leave our universities or our technical colleges who start their own businesses. And just a few weeks ago, I was, I was up in Eau Claire and I uh, visited a company, a software company, uh, that uh, the people who had started it had gone to UW-Eau Claire. Now they're hiring lots of people from UW-Eau Claire, both in the computer sciences area and in other areas as well. Just last year, this company who a lot, most of us haven't even heard of added 100 employees and they just were moving into a new office building that they had built. These were, this was a Silicon Valley type of success story. You know, they were in jeans and t-shirts and yet they're talking about how they were just opening offices in Australia and China and all over the world. And I'm like, this is so cool. But it is because of investment in our universities and it is because of entrepreneurial skills of the people who are coming out of that. I want to work in jeans and t-shirts. <laughs> we're to come back with Mary Burke right after this. <laughs> Our guest this morning, Democratic candidate for Governor Mary Burke. And again, I would just like to say that we have invited Governor Walker to appear on For the Record. He's acknowledged the invitation. He has not accepted the invitation yet. If he does, we will uh, have a conversation with Governor Walker in the next few weeks. Um, and I'm also with my colleague, uh, Jessica Arp. Well, wanted to ask too, you, you've talked about these various things that might make long-term or short-term impacts, but if you had to point to one thing in your plan that would make the biggest jobs impact. I think that's what a lot of people are making their decision on. Who can make this uh, this biggest impact on jobs figures in the state? What is that one thing? I'm going to have to s disagree, Jessica, that there is one thing. Anyone who can boil it down to one thing, frankly, is probably a politician with a good soundbite. I am about plans that are going to work and implementing those plans in a way. Because you can also have plans, but if you don't implement it right, they're not going to be successful. I know that from my career at Trek, the leading the Boys and Girls Club. Um, those are things that you have to do in order to be successful. And so I, it really is. It's, it's five core strategies that I've laid out in my jobs plan. Uh, people go to, can go to BurkeForWisconsin.com, read it, look at it, judge for yourself. I wish it was just one thing. If it was that easy, everyone would be doing it. It is tough work and we shouldn't underestimate just what it is going to take and that's why we have to put the politics aside. We have to focus on what's going to work. We do have to bring people together because it is tough work. It's not going to be easy. It means bringing in our educational institutions, whether it's the UW system or our K-12 system. We have to be working with the business community. That's why I've sat down with the head of WMC and said, I want to find that common ground on how we can make sure we're driving Wisconsin forward. It does mean we have to align all of our economic development and public policy around uh, creating jobs, around industry clusters. Uh, exporting the experience that I've had at Trek that's how Wisconsin companies can do it um, but there's a number of tools that have to be done uh, we have to be creating new businesses we're 46 in the country in terms of new businesses started and yet it's small business growth and new businesses that account for 70 percent of the jobs created so it's I, I can't I, I just can't point to one thing it really is all of these things I don't want to I don't want to underestimate how difficult this work is but that's what I get excited about taking this on every single day that I'm out there the governor though has I mean it, it's pretty cut and dry I mean he says three things cut property and income taxes 
freeze technical college and UW tuition further and put new limits on uh, welfare recipients and require them to do job training and drug testing. I mean, those are pretty easy for voters to digest takeaways. How would you contrast yourself? What's your position on uh, income and property taxes? Would you cut them? Would you increase them? Where do well, you stand on those issues? Uh, Governor Walker's uh, proposals here to me, they do sound like a career politician's because I'm a business person those things aren't going to make sure that Wisconsin is a top 10 thriving economy. You need a lot more than that. In terms of taxes, we got to have a competitive business climate. No doubt about that. And our property taxes, anyone who gets that bill in December, I think, would say they're high. I want to reduce property taxes, but I'm not going to do it by passing the buck to local communities and school districts uh, to, to have to go to referendums and do things that are going to hurt uh, being able to provide safe communities and strong schools. So it means how would prioritizing. You do it? How would you reduce property taxes then? Well, you have to prioritize education and shared services in the state budget. But if we had grown at just the same rate as the rest of the country, over the last three years in Wisconsin, instead of lagging the country, Wisconsin's economy would be $4 billion a year bigger. That's $4 billion on which you would be, tax base on which you can invest in infrastructure, make sure you're having good schools, still reduce taxes, and balance a budget. And what I'm concerned about is right now, under Governor Walker's plan, we are $1.8 billion in the hole, projected structural deficit, going into the next budget cycle. So it's not working. We're dead last in Midwest job growth. We have a $1.8 billion deficit going into the next budget. And we don't have any plans on how we're really going to drive Wisconsin's economy forward. Very so would we, you not have given that income tax cut that was in the last budget? Because some say that increase is leading to this deficit. Would you not have done that? What I would have done is, and I was clear when this decision was made back in January or February, I said it was fiscally irresponsible. And the reason why, we were only, two, we were only six months into a two-year budget cycle. Governor Walker spent money we didn't have. And now we're going to have to look at how that, how that budget hole is plugged. So I would have made fiscally responsible decisions. A lot of that was giving tax breaks to those at the top. And Governor Walker thinks you give tax breaks to those at the top and it somehow trickles down and creates jobs. I'm a business person. That's not how jobs get created. I need another half an hour. <laughs> Mary, thank you. Jessica, thank you. We're going to come back and wrap up for the record right after this. My thanks to Mary Burke. Next week, my guest is the head of the National League of Women Voters. We'll talk about voting issues then. See you next Sunday. Thanks for joining us.